So the moment we've all been waiting for, well, <laughs> the moment I've been waiting for is what is causing the low oil pressure. And more than likely what it is, the culprit, if there is a smoking gun, because I don't know, if there is a smoking gun, it's gonna be under here. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I can truly be Oh hey! Welcome to Yogi's Garage. I'm Yogi, and we're back with Project Olaf. As you can see, I'm done. I tore the entire engine apart, but that was the easy part. The hard part is gonna be in a future video where I gotta put it all back together. So what I wanna do today is I wanna give you a compressed version of what it took to take this engine apart. I've already shown you what it takes to take the engine out of an engine bay. I've already shown you the problem that caused me to take the engine out in the first place, which was poor Olaf's low oil pressure problem. So without further ado, Enjoy the video, and we'll see you on the other side. So before I continue on with what I'm doing, I discovered a process to get these stripped bolts out. Take a look at the inside of this bolt. If you can see, that thing is not exactly a perfect Allen head, but you see those bite marks on the outside? Check out how I did it. I took, I'm not, a, I'm not happy about it, but I did. <laughs> I may actually use my impact on this one next one. It's probably a good idea. I took my 12 millimeter socket and hammered it over the top. It's a 12 point and I hammered it over the top of these and the bolts came right out. So I take my impact extension sit it flat over that and just kind of fully seated as you can get and you don't even need a counter on the crank because i'm using my impact there we go and then i just take this put it in my vise, put a screwdriver through that opening and just pop that bolt right out. I think what ticks me off most about this is, I believe these bolts are supposed to be replaced upon uh, removing it. And these were already stripped out, folks. There, I did not strip that out. Stripped out the outside. <laughs> Okay, so I've got everything locked into place. I'm ready to remove the tensioner pulley here and get the V-belt off. And then the idler pulleys, I'm gonna take these off. When you're dealing with idler pulleys, they should be marked different colors. If you can see the red washer in there and the, red and the black in here, that's your top, that's your bottom. If not, you need to mark it. And also, just like we did on the serpentine belt, you should mark the timing belt the direction that you pulled it off so that you put it back on the same exact way. Otherwise, again, you'll, um, you'll uh, mess the belt up. But again, I'm putting a new belt on, I'm putting a new water pump in, new idler pulleys and a new tensioner. So all this is getting refreshed. The first thing you gotta do is just pop this one off. Here it comes, man! <laughs> 
Poor Olaf. There's some crud down in the ignition coil hole. You can see some oil, but all in all, not too bad. Number four is probably the dirtiest down there. So next thing is, is I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out and take a look. Lever. That's my lever right here. Here we go. Look, dude, I already disconnected you. Let go. Wow. Okay, so what am I looking for here? Well, I'm looking for unusual wear on the cam lobes here. Unusual meaning uneven, maybe some jaggedness, uh, but I'm not seeing that. And all I'm seeing is a really nice uh, intake and exhaust uh, cam, but I'm no cam expert. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this back cover off. Let's get it done. Okay. Let's pause for a second and get a closer look. All right, this was a red herring here, but I thought it would be important to show you nonetheless. You're look, what you're looking at is inside of the cam chain housing. And uh, this here, where these rings here help control the passage of oil 
in and around the uh, cam chain and the cam chain adjuster. So although it doesn't affect oil pressure, it will affect performance on the cam chain and the cam chain adjuster. So uh, it does need to be repaired, but this is not the smoking gun I was looking for. So better luck next time. So now it's time to tackle the um, cam adjuster as well as um, the chain. So what I plan on doing is locking the cams into a timed position. That way they don't come out of uh, time before I, I even begin. So there's a special tool that's needed. And uh, Asamacher makes the best one available. And what this does is this locks the cams into position while you're trying to uh, remove the wheel or remove the, the sprocket here. So there's lobes here inside the cams and these vertical bars slide right into the lobes. And then you bolt them in using the, either the bolts that came with your valve cover or the ones that were provided with the tool itself. Uh, personally, I like this. And then what I like to do is, um, now that that's in place, it can't rotate diagonally, as you can see. This is a unique tool to removing the camshaft adjuster. Take a look at the tip here, and it is not a Torx. It may look like a Torx, but it's not. It's, uh, the, the best one out there is made by Asimacher, and there is your part number. Let me get the glare off of this thing. Right there, there's your part number. So basically it's an Asimacher 0920 for the VW part 5220. This goes right in here and allows you to pop that out. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, make sure it's in there. And just like that, the engine went out of, out of time. This tool here failed miserably. All right, I'm gonna apologize before I uh, say anything else, but I'm pretty pissed off about this. Um, clearly this is not a high quality tool. I knew it when I got it. I complained to the seller on Amazon. They offered me like $10, but I put it off because I hadn't used the tool yet. I used the tool, you saw what happened in the video. This thing is just total junk. I mean, look at this. This is not even hardened steel. I don't even know what they're using. So I'm gonna try to save this tool because getting an Asimacher tool is, you can't get it right now, it's discontinued. So if you get it, you're gonna buy it used off of somebody else or uh, if you have a buddy that has it, lucky you. So I'm gonna try to save this thing Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing back on because the threads are just just crushed right there. You can see that uh, from me trying to torque on the um, on that cam adjuster bolt. Okay, so I'm going to try to get it back on there. I cleaned it up. I put some uh, PB Blaster silicone lu lubricant just to kind of get the threads to finesse in. I might get lucky. And if I do, I'll back it out and I'm gonna hit both of them with thread locker. Uh, why am I doing that? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the stupid tool just to, you know, hold things where they should be held. I mean, you can even see how it dug into the metal there. That makes me mad. Put it in there in place and then I'm gonna slap a couple of vice grips here. I'm gonna wrap them in something so any of the metal or flakes or anything like that doesn't fall into, or I don't bite into the cam itself and create shavings. That's the last thing you want to do. So I'm going to use the tool, a couple of clamps, try to pop that bolt. Let's do it. Okay, we're going to do this again. And you can see I have a vice grip there holding the intake cam. 
I've got the curvature of the vise up against the outside of the head and top of these, this crappy tool here. It should give me enough resistance so I can pop that bolt off. What I, what I need from you as a viewer is to scream out loud, as loud as you can, if you start seeing that chain move. Can you do that? All right. You should be able to get this done with your help. Okay, I retorqued that vice grip. I wish I had the Milwaukee style where I could torque that down even more. But here we go. Again, scream out loud if you hear that chain, if you see that cam moving. Okay, I like to use two hands because. Holy mother of God. That thing is only supposed to be torqued to like 70 freaking foot pounds. Whew. You know what time it is, folks. It's time for the breaker bar. Okay. Now this should give me the power that I need. Oh, you scared me. <laughs> I thought I broke the damn spit. got the uh, manifold off finally. I was kind of hoping to get the manifold off with the injectors, but no such luck. So it took a lot of wiggling and slight prying to just pull it straight up and off. So take a look at those valves in there. That is some nastiness there. Yeah, that's completely unacceptable. <laughs> it's taking the... Um, head off and pulling the valves and giving them some much needed love and cleaning all this out will give this car a new car engine feel. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the oil filter housing along with the oil cooler. <laughs> This thing it looks like a filter. Alright, All right, I'm using this counter holding tool and I'm going to remove the bolt off of this exhaust cam. Hopefully.
simple enough. Engine mount removed. So according to repair manual, I have to loosen them in a specific sequence too. So it's one, two, three, four. So I'm hitting the corners across from each other and then I slowly move my way in to the center. Boom. Okay, here we are. We're approaching the finish line on the dismantle of Olaf's two liter four cylinder engine. This is the underside of Olaf. That's the oil pan you're looking at right there. And so you can see that this little indentation here is where the subframe sat. So you can see why I, I said to myself, there's no way I'm gonna sit on my, lie on my back for weeks at a time working on the underside of this thing when I can just slap it on an engine stand like this and um, accomplish pretty much the, the same thing but from the comfort of uh, my seat over there and um, some you know beer and whatever <laughs> when I'm not rolling around because getting up and down is just sucks. Um, so anyway. <laughs> So that's a good sign. Okay, we're free here. It's like the bead of adhesive is off. Okay. So the moment we've all been waiting for, well, <laughs> the moment I've been waiting for is what is causing the low oil pressure. And more than likely what it is, the culprit, if there is a smoking gun, because I don't know if there is a smoking gun, it's going to be under here. Okay, that's a bolt. Okay, I'm gonna set that down just for a moment. All right, this is your oil pump right here. Balance shafts, which is another culprit. And then underneath here is uh, the connecting rods to the crank and the pistons. So, just looking at it, I see a lot of uh, debris in the oil pickup, but nothing, nothing too uh, too severe. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the oil pickup, and I'm going to remove it here in a moment. But all those little specks in there are clogging up the pickup. This may be it, folks. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it on my workbench and we'll get a really good look at it.
Ecco. Ok. Here is the oil pump. It's all mechanical. And there's the balance shafts doing their job. Man, they look perfectly fine. All right, so I'm nearing the end of the takeout, but the first thing I wanna do is take out the pistons by removing these two bolts on the bottom of the piston rod. And that's cylinder number one. And as, you, and as I take them out, I'm gonna mark them to ensure that I put them in in the right order and in the right cylinder as well. Thinking the piston rings are keeping me from popping out of there. I got it. Just trying to be gentle. All right. Here you go. Now that I got the pistons out, I'm going to go ahead and remove the crankshaft bearings as well. Based on the outcome of the bearings that are on the connecting rods, those indicate that the bearings on the crank itself, which are underneath these five uh, sets of caps, uh, are probably worn too, and I might as well go ahead and do it. Um, it's like each time I peel back a layer, I'm like, well, I might as well keep going. There's some considerable wear on these particular bearings. You can see the wear right there. So, yeah, I'll replace them. Dang. That's expensive. All right, so there you have it, folks. This is pretty much the end of the engine block teardown, trying to isolate and identify the low oil pressure. So the, the crankshaft is in perfect working condition. The journals, as you can see, are not damaged, no metal broken. The, all the bearings checked out on the caps. The cam, on the other hand is toast, like I said. Let me just bring over this. Uh, this is the uh, top frame to the cylinder head and you can see the gouging in the journals. I mean, these are many, basically many versions of what you see down there in the crank area. And worst case would have been the damage to the crank journals that would have been the end of me i would have just trashed the block and started over so this is not an ideal situation however it is what it is these are completely trashed i cannot reuse the cylinder head at all this com this concludes the teardown i identified the oil pressure problem suspect number one is the oil pickup this has been sitting out for about a week and a half now, and you can see that the oil pickup is completely clogged. Here's what it should look like, brand new. That's what I gotta do now. I have to, uh, I'm waiting for parts, and then I'm gonna start slowly rebuilding. So what'd you think? Pretty easy, right? Taking apart an engine is no big deal, man. Just gotta unscrew some bolts. The hard part, it's when we got to put this all back together. That's a future video. 
for my technical folks out there, I know I cut some corners on the video, but there's so much information when dismantling and putting an engine back together, I can't just cover it in one or two videos. So look for some deep dives in the future. If this is your first time visiting, again, please subscribe. It's not gonna hurt you. Hit the thumbs up. Didn't like it, hit the thumbs down, leave a comment. One more thing, I have a free tool. If you could just go to that video right there, follow the instructions that I provide at the beginning of the video. If you're new, you subscribe, we hit a milestone, which is 150. I'll give away the tool to some random person in the, who leaves a comment. What a deal, right? I'm gonna be doing that for just about every tier, every milestone that I set. I may even give away a power tool or a car or something in the future. Who knows? Stick around. But anyway, I hope you learned something. I know I did. We'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. Mind fried to a crisp, make an MC into a wide-eyed lunatic. <laughs> <laughs>